the lady from Anka. International Affair. Hi, today I want to take a look at best practice for accessing YouTube products. Why is there a best practice? Well, before spring 2013, if you wanted to share access to your YouTube channel, perhaps because you wanted somebody else to help you upload, you had to let them sign in as you using your username and your password. And that, of course, had implications because they could then take over your Google account and your YouTube channel and you'd lose access altogether. So best practice is actually providing somebody with limited access to your YouTube product without them having to sign into your Google account as you. And there are two ways of doing that. One is to use a brand account. And that is actually the vehicle that I used in this example here, client's YouTube brand account. I linked the YouTube channel to a brand account as I created it and then invited others to manage it with me. This means that that person who then manages or co-owns it with me doesn't have to sign into my Google account. They sign in with their own Google account. But there is another option and let's have a look at that. So I'm going to click on the avatar, the top right hand side. I'm going to select YouTube Studio from the list. And on the left hand side, I'm going to click settings. And here I have two options. I can keep managing permissions from my brand account over at myaccount.google.com forward slash brand accounts and then choosing the brand account that I want to manage. Bearing in mind, of course, that there are only two types of roles that apply to YouTube. That is owner, that's primary owner or co-owner and manager. Or I can actually move all of my sort of access permissions, if you like, to YouTube Studio. So that would basically bring what was do being done on the brand account side of things to YouTube Studio instead. The other advantage here is that there are also more roles. I can have two types of editor and two types of viewer. And I also do away with the rather vexing issue of having co-owners because, of course, if you remember from the previous video, all owners, no matter if they're primary or just co-owners, have the same rights and they can remove the other owner from having anything to do with the YouTube brand account. So there are some limitations that apply and you can click on this to learn more. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to move permissions from my brand account right into YouTube Studio. So basically the YouTube channel then functions by itself without the need for the brand account. Click on move permissions. And I can now invite others to help me as managers or editors or viewers. So I'm going to click at the top right hand side where it says invite. I'm going to select that they become manager. Please make sure that you read everything that you're shown. Basically, if I invite this, this other person, then I am responsible for their actions. And this is something that should really be obvious, but it has to be said that you are responsible for the other people in your team, particularly if you are the owner. So I'm going to click on done. And as you can see, that particular party has now been invited to be a manager. And I can change that as well. And I can also revoke the invitation by removing access. So I'm going to save that and done. Now if I go back to settings and go back to permissions, I also have the option to opt out of permissions within YouTube Studio and that will return me to actually managing permissions via the brand account at myaccount.google.com forward slash brand account and selecting the brand account there. I seriously recommend that you consider using YouTube Studio instead of using a YouTube brand account setup unless you're transferring ownership. Thank you for listening and goodbye.